Hey folks, Scanning Nomad here. Hope you are well. So today's episode, we're going to be talking about our 1000 solar setup. Uh, so let me just do a quick breakdown of the cost. Each of these panels costs £65 each. This all-in-one power station by Bluetti cost me £720. The expansion cables were £20 and the remote switch was £20. This comes to a total of £955. But let me show you the power bank. The all-in-one power station that I have is a 2000 watt hour and 2000 watt inverter. Uh, it has multiple plugs on it. A lot of them are quite similar. This is not sponsored by Bluetti. I paid my own money for this. Today's video, we're gonna be simply explaining what these all-in-one power stations are. I certainly get a lot of questions about them when I'm ferrying it from the car to the boat or if people see it in the background on the car camping videos or the boat's lifestyle videos. Uh, so effectively, they're an all-in-one power station. There's a large variety out there. So I'll just quickly walk you through what they are, what the numbers are. It's not gonna be technical in any way. I'm just going to give you a quick overview. This one just so happens to be by Bluetti. And then how is it that you can cut your cost down by implementing things like solar charging uh, with it and running like a basic home setup. I purchased this originally for the boat and I use my car as a mobile office and go car camping too. So it's handy to have on-demand power in the vehicle. So that's why I brought it. And recently they've had a big power cut over in Spain and the south of France. So something like this, an emergency home backup system uh, works pretty great. But in general, on like a day like today, we're generating between four to five kilowatt hours. So we're saving about a pound worth of electricity around lunchtime when we're hitting 100% and we're not using the full capacity. Uh, we do lose out on that. And these things are modular, which means you can buy the expansion batteries and you can really scale them up uh, depending on your budget. Obviously, there's a big difference between this and putting a whole solar array on your roof, which would set you back, you know, five, six, seven thousand pound, depending if you're going with the batteries you know, you need scaffolding. It's more complicated than simply just dumping them on the fence. Uh, the reason they're on the fence is because of where the sun comes up. So it comes up that way uh, behind the camera. And then we get basically full sun for most of the day here. So no shading or anything like that. But because we're going to be downsizing the house, uh, we want something that's going to be pack away and move on, which is why these solar generators work pretty well. Pretty much all the power banks will have a couple of numbers on them. They'll have a W and a WH. So the W refers to watts, and this is the inverter power. So a 2000 watt one would do most things. So you'll be able to run a vacuum on there, a toaster, a single burner induction hub something like a Sage Barista coffee machine. What it won't run is the bigger irons, it won't run the bigger kettles, and it won't run a washing machine. So for example, today, although we've got the power going in and 100% battery, it won't unfortunately power the washing machine, which is a little bit unfortunate. The next one that I'll be getting will be able to power something like that. But at the moment, I'm pretty satisfied being able to save pretty much a pound a day on the energy bill at home. Let's talk about long-term cost savings. So at the moment, we've been charged 27 pence per kilowatt in the UK. So that's set by Ofgem. And at current rates, you can see what it will cost you per kilowatt. My guess would be energy prices continue to get more expensive. And by generating your own energy, it will be a hedge against those rises. So today, so far, we've used one pound and six pence of electricity. So that's two kilowatts. And that's mostly because we've been using the other power bank. If we weren't using the power bank, then if you had three kilowatts on there, uh, so that'd be about 80 pence. So we're saved by just making our own power. It's not much, but pennies make pounds. And if you think of the long run, how much that will save. The good thing about these all-in-one power stations is those multiple ways you can charge it. Here we have the solar panels that we're going to detail in shortly. Get the wall plug adapter to charge it. A lot of the newer versions of this, you can put a timer on the app. If you're on a dual tariff, it means you can charge overnight uh, to kind of top you up, especially during the winter. And you can also capitalize on this cheaper energy uh, throughout the nighttime. Another way you can charge it is through the cigarette lighter charger, which would do about 5% per one hour driving on this 2000 watt power station because it will charge at around 100 watts. A lot of the manufacturers offer these DC to DC chargers. Uh, Bluetti's one is called the Charger One. I brought that one for about 300 pound and I can charge while I drive. So when I'm going to the marina from here, I'll charge about 75 to 80% for the three hours that I'm driving to the marina, which is very good during the winter because obviously when I'm driving there, I'm arriving and it's full. And when I'm coming back, it's full. 
So this is the Charger One and I've just attached it to one of those boards from Ikea with the holes in them and I just zip tied it. You've got this on off switch at the top here, uh, which you can leave on. Uh, it does have the safety disconnect for the car and the way it's connected is the same solder cables and you just basically plug them in like so. And then you have the quick release connection, which just goes in together. And it's as simple as that. As you're driving, this one would charge at 560 watts. One of the good things about the Charge One is you don't need to have a Bluetti device. You can use pretty much any of the power banks. You can tell it what voltage to actually charge it at, and then you can just charge it through that way. So if you go with an EcoFlow, um, Anker, whichever ones, as long as they use the solar chargers, and all you need to do is make sure that the solar input is put on here uh, through the options. For you keen-eyed viewers, you may notice that I have two of the same panels and one different. This different one here is because these are discontinued, so I couldn't get those. You can mix and match panels, so these 435 watt ones and this 445 watts. On the specs, they look very, very similar. Uh, this one is actually a bifacial panel. They're pretty much the same price as the regular panel. The good thing about bifacial panels is if you're elevating them on, say, like a boat, or if you're making like a sun cover, they actually absorb light from underneath and you get that little boost from them. Um, but these are the panels for what I have and they were 65 pound each and I brought them from a place called City Plumbing not sponsored by them either I really want to thank you for watching the video and liking it so what I do with the YouTube ad revenue is I try and help my parents out the best I can recently I just purchased this solar panel using the YouTube ad revenue I've basically been buying one panel at a time and hopefully I can build up a scalable and make it more impactful when figuring out the solar panels the most important thing is to be within the voltage range this one in particular will do a voltage of 35 to 150 volts which is how I managing to get away with doing these three large panels because I'm within that range. If I had one of the smaller Bluetti fold-out solar panels, the 200 watt ones, they don't have enough voltage so I'll be under on this particular unit. It typically says on the side or the spec sheet and the important thing to look at for the solar panels is the VOC which is the open current voltage. It will say VOC, that's the number you want to look for and you want to make sure that that's within the range if you're connected in series because as I says if you're connecting them together the same way as I have, male and female, men and female and then connecting them as one big panel they will add up the voltage so on the newer version I wouldn't be able to set it up in this particular way I'd have to do it a different way so the video doesn't get too long what I'll do is I'll put a list of things that I use uh, on a daily basis on there but the main way as I save power at home is this is charging in the morning we'll brew up using the coffee machine on there I typically have brunch so I have something like an omelette and toast uh, for brunch or shikshara and then on the afternoons I'll have like a late dinner uh, so I tend to eat two meals a day so this is it in place so we have the on and off switch I picked that up from eBay for about 20 pound and all you do is you simply connect the MC4A adapters the other side of this just goes through a hole in the wall that way we can keep the power bank safe and then it's as simple as connecting these and then flipping the switch. So I'll show you the display screen in a second. So this one is actually touch screen, so we can press it here. The four options on here, this top left one is for the solar. So when I switch that on, you'll see it jump up and it will probably be 700 watts. So here we go, 100, 300, 500, and then 712, which is the maximum this one will input. What we do is this plug here is an extension lead to the front room which powers a TV, cable, box, laptop and mobile phone. So this plug here just plugs into one of these power bricks with the USBs and the additional power on here. And then to switch the AC on, which are these big plugs, you press that one and then the DC which is the USB and the wireless charging is this one. So these are the lower power USB things. The reason you can switch them off is it can save you power. Right now it's lunchtime and we are pulling it, we've already put in almost two kilowatts of energy. The next section of the video, I'll just demonstrate what we're doing and give you the results from it so the video doesn't get too long.
If you plan ahead with your meals, you can use things like slow cookers that will also help with your energy. So this one is rated for 100 watts. I've never used this one on the power bank, so it's gonna be pretty interesting for me because I've used the other stuff before. But anything that heats up your oven, your hot water, that type of stuff, they're the real energy intensive things. So if you're using things like your slow cooker during the day, you know, you're 100% battery, you may as well just have it slowly trickling over, uh, heating it up. So we're gonna cook a curry tonight. I'm gonna whack this on. I'm gonna turn it on high, because a lot of stuff is frozen, and we'll have a little look. So 180 watts, that's what's being drawn right now, and uh, nothing else is plugged in. So yeah, I'm gonna drink my coffee in Game Mug, and uh, all of this has been for free because of the sun today. The next test we'll do is just a regular vacuum. This one is by a company called Vax, and it states on the label that it would do 850 watts. You can see the label just in the bottom here. So we'll cut the grass. It does stay on here that it would do 1,400, but we'll check it out anyway. So I just ran it and it was running at 940 watts, which means in theory, I could mow the lawn nonstop for two hours. 300. <laughs> That's the lawnmower, the hedge trimmer, the vacuuming downstairs. We've had the TV on for a bit. I've cooked an omelette. I'm uh, about to make another cup of coffee. Uh, we're currently at 87% battery. It's only lunchtime, really. We're putting in 700 watts constantly on the solar. It does have a little bit of cloud cover from time to time, and it drops down to 200 watts. But so far, we've done 3 kilowatts worth of energy input which basically means we've saved a total of 81 pence so far today and it's only lunchtime. So of course, all the energy we're gonna be using, we're probably gonna be, be between four and five kilowatt hours by the end of today. Last year, we only had the two Longi panels and they were only producing 40 watts in one of the weeks that we were doing, which meant for a whole week, we only created 7% energy, which is really not enough to do anything. So they do have the limitations. Today, it's been a sunny day. The sun has been hitting the panels all day, so we've done pretty well. But when it's cloudy and you've got the coverage, it does drop down. So I don't really wanna boost up people's expectations of them. They do have the limitations. Um, but I just want to share that with you. If I was to scale up the system that I have, which is what I'm planning to do, of course, I'll save more money over the longer period of time. Of course, you have that initial upfront cost of being slightly more, but in the longer run, you'd save money. Overall, I've been very happy with my Bluetti device and I would probably buy the newer version and I'll leave the newer version link in the description below along with the Charger One if you do want to have a little look. If you're a regular viewer to the channel, welcome back. I've done the interview with the yacht broker and he's going to, to basically just hopefully sign off on the interview I've sent it to him hopefully he'll like it and then give it a thumbs up to be published online we're gonna do a few boat tour videos I know a lot of you like that and then we'll do a few more sailing uh, vlogs if you're new to the channel I do a mixture of content whether it's fixing my car that's how to give away duct tape and hope car camping I own a 40 foot sailboat and then from time to time I do this type of video where kind of like a product review or answering your questions I do get a lot of questions about this especially when I'm very it from the car to the boat hope you've enjoyed the video and you found it informative and filled in any gaps you may have but yeah thanks for watching thanks for being fans